Hello pilots and welcome back to another X-Wing flight video brought to you by Out of Art Gaming. As always, my name is Phil and today we are chancing upon an engagement between the Separatists and the Republic and joining me to see what happens we have... One of the chances, it's James. I'm so glad we both played on that. Um, <laughs> Welcome back, James. It's been a while since we've had you on, so it's yeah, all great. Bit. Uh, I know we don't have any of your factions, but I like to think if you did dabble in another faction, Republic might be one you'd look at. Oh I yeah, mean, I always not... gravitate towards the, uh, the the good guys. So, or the factions beginning with R, Republic. Well, there's that as well, I, I suppose. But then I've got some scum ships, so what will what, what they be? Just the really mean guys, or I, I don't know. Depends on which scum. I mean, some of them cross the borders. I think you went for it because they have Kanan and Sabine in there, really. I, I, I actually went for it for the, uh, the Mandalorians, but that also doesn't begin with an, a, an R. So. No. But what but the do we have here? Uh, what we have here is we have a big separatist list from Madbots. We've seen it on the channel before, but he's been told what he can and can't do this time, so hopefully he'll fly it a bit more accurately. We've got General Grievous in the Bell Club with Marksmanship, Proton Rockets, Impervium Plating, and Solus One. We have two HMP gunships with DGS-286 with the Multi-Missile Pod, Kalani, and Repulsive Stabilizers. The Onderon Oppressor with multi missile pods, proximity mines, delayed fuses, and repulsor stable lift, repulsor lift stabilizers. We got the Iron Assembler with Discord missiles and the grappling struts, and we have three Colorado AI holdouts with Predator energy shell charges. And that's what we have. And I've just realized that the colors don't actually fully match, so. If you see a yellow one on the board, it's the pink one on the overlay, so we'll just go with that. What do we have on the other side? So, coming up against Madbots, we have Wes with his Republic list of Anakin Skywalker in the Eta 2. That's the Siege of Coruscant version. So he's got the built-in Malice, Ion Weapons, and R2-D2. He's also got Obi-Wan Kenobi in the Delta 7 with Brilliant Evasion, Heightened Perception, Elusive, Q7 Astromech, Calibrated Laser Targeting. We've also got Padme in the Naboo Starfighter with Elusive, Fire Control System, Advanced Proton Torpedoes and R4P Astromech. We've also got Luminara with, in the Delta 7 with um, Heightened Perception and R4 P17, also with the calibrated laser targeting. And rounding off the list is Matchstick in the bulkier Y-Wing with dedicated dorsal turret, seismic charges, and synchronized console. Yeah, a really nice list there. I do like the Siege of Coruscant Anakin, but I actually really like the inclusion of Luminara because she's actually quite a nice one to help with defense especially with these one shield delta sevens but i do i feel a little bit sorry for wes here because he's got heightened perception on two of his ships but generally he is he only has one initiative clash so it's almost like a, a wasted upgrade i mean it didn't play a safe and sorry and i mean how many points is it uh two points i think think or two or three uh, three apparently three so yeah. like if if you wanted something else on luminara and you feel like you're missing out on it maybe but oh well really i mean luminara as you said is there for the support role anyway really and being a delta seven is a really nippy ship as well yes. so but i mean other than the y-wing all four of wes's ships are really can be really fast and especially Padme who excels at that because she gets her evade token when doing a speed 3 to 5 manoeuvre and again her ability is so cool and so frustrating if you come up against it whilst an enemy ship in the full dark defends or performs an attack the ship can only modify one focus result 
other results can still be modified so blanks hits into crits etc but only one focus so if you roll although i guess going up against all of these vulture droids that are just calculating they can only change one anyway can't they true or do, you, do they that. get to change another if they can borrow a token uh, so the Colorado AI holdouts do not have network calculations. Well, they don't they have the network. Okay. No, they're modified for organics, so they don't actually have network calculation. Um, what they have instead is this ship is not affected by the standardized restriction. Reduce the difficulty of your speed two and three bank maneuvers. Uh, increase the difficulty of your three hard turn maneuvers. So they are very different to the Iron Assembler. So, yeah, it doesn't really make much of a difference there. But I mean, if they were to have a target lock and roll all focuses, they could only re-roll one of them because re-rolling is still modifying. And then um, Iron Assembler has those Discord missiles. I who Who would you try and land those on? in Wes's list. Okay. Anakin straight away because he's got no shields. See, I, I uh, thought that at first as well, but with the... Actually, no, because it's a Siege of Coruscant. Does, does he still have the barrel roll pre-maneuver thing you can do? I, I can't pull up the card because it's the Siege of Coruscant one. So, it does still have the system phase barrel roll, but if you manage to land it on there it's gonna and it's not taken off before the end of that engagement step it's gonna trigger yeah so you'll get a right. crit on it but i yeah. feel like trying to land it on maybe matchstick and just slowly build up damage yeah matchstick could be a good one i mean only one available matchstick though so you get weight of fire yeah. on there actually how does it's it interact with him because he's got because he's in the Y-Wing, he's got like that plated armor, doesn't he? Yeah, so while you defend, if you're not critically damaged, change one crit result to a hit result. So he'd still take the hit. But it's not um, its not a result, it's just dealing a card with the buzz droids, isn't it? You know what? To Google, to find that, out... That get around it. Yeah, because I'm... Again, I very rarely use it. So, after an enemy ship moves through or overlaps, you relocate it to its front or rear guides. You're at range zero of the ship. You cannot overlap an object in this way. If you cannot be placed at either set of guides, you suffer one damage and it dies. At your initiative, each enemy ship at range zero suffers one crit damage. Ooh. Yeah, yeah I would say take the crit because... It's yeah. not a result. That's a good way to get a crit onto a, a white. And then it's and then once it has a crit, it loses the pacing effect yeah. anyway, right? Yeah, so once those three shields are down, you get the crit on. Plated hull is gone. Yeah, okay. I, I also, just looking at the board here, I really like Madbots just sending the assembler just straight onto that rock, parking up with the grappling struts, and just sitting there, making sure he's got someone on the objective. Absolutely. That is, I think, what can make Vulture Droids really good. Just stick them by an objective, knowing that they're going to keep grabbing it, and scoring that is just key. Yeah, the, the again, objectives where you want to just stay near somewhere, being able to just stop is fantastic. Yeah, so chance engagement and assault the transmission. Assault the satellite array? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Scram Scramble and salvage you have to do an action on. Although they're not too bad either, because again, with salvage, you get in there, grab an objective, stick on a rock. You're not going to worry about barrel rolling or boosting, because you're just going to be yeah. sitting there. I mean, if you take a crit, you're probably going to die quite quickly anyway, because you've got three hull. So, and if they force it to be jettisoned and you've got two on the rock, the other one will just grab it next turn pretty handy yeah i do uh, feel like Wayne's list would really struggle with the salvage ops because he's got four very maneuverable ships that want to be repositioning i mean it is i i mean i flew we had it last week on the channel my republic list and i had um padme uh delta seven 
and some V-Wings. And yes, it is tricky because I had Padme pick up a, a su supply cache and I did, I did feel like I missed out on some repositioning, but Sometimes if you're scoring points, you might you might not get yourself yeah. in a position to get the shot, but then you also might not be being shot because again with the M1s you tend to want to try and flank so you can keep those fast moves. That's an aggressive move from Luminara there. That is, yeah. Um, then again, has she got balls? It's it's pretty close to getting the bullseye. It's very difficult to tell, but it's very close. If she does have bullseye, that is really nicely lined up and then obviously you've got uh, Padme and Anakin still to come in so Grievous is going to be in a little bit of a tricky spot um, potentially I may if it was me I probably would have carried on back up the board to get him in with the rest of Madbots' squadron like bait the Republic in a bit more yeah I could see that but I mean, he's got impervium plating, so he's I mean, he's got s that tiny ship has seven hull, so move over resistance Y wing when it comes to ridiculous hull. Oh, Padme turning in, only doing a two speed as well, so not going to be getting the evade, but makes sense. Ooh, taking a lot. Uh, possibly hoping for the advanced proton torpedoes. Oh, for next turn. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I'm just having a quick look at everyone's loadouts. So the Separatist bombers have sort of missile pods and some proximity mines. Yeah. You know what? Since we've seen mines, actually. Yeah, I mean, we tend to see bombs more than mines. And. I, I mean, I prefer like your bombs, like seismic charges, thermal detonators. Yeah, with matchsticks. Because I, I kind of want to see matchstick blow up the rock that uh, Assembler is standing on. I just think that'd be funny. Oh, it'll be absolutely brilliant because I just got this image in my head of the Assembler just going, uh, that's not, not right. Where's that? I'm not entirely sure about Obi Wan's position because there's a lot of guns pointing at him. Yeah, he's gone very aggressive in that's, there. Yeah, okay, that's a bit safer at least. Yeah, so he's got himself out of Iron Assembler. He's still going to be caught by at least the Onderon and that yeah, further. He'll get a range by this though. Range and... And a, maybe a bit more of a rock for some of them, depending on how that works out. Obstacle definitely for the Vulture not so sure for the HMP depends on how much further that obstacle sticks out under the iron assembler but I think it curves in quite I think he should I think I don't think he's gonna get it there but we are definitely I, I mean to be honest I think Grievous is gonna be taking five shots this turn he is, but it's Grievous. He's got the plating, he's got the extra health. He's. I think he'll live. He'll... I think he'll limp away. Yeah. But I feel like he might live. Yeah. If he doesn't take three or four damage, Wes will feel like he's had a really rough time of it. Um, I mean, that impervium plating is going to be key, I reckon. Obviously, I wonder you... if Madbox is just going to go, look, I'm just going to take all of the damage just so I can fire these proton rockets, if he is in range for it. If he's got the bullseye, yeah. So if he's got the bullseye, then yeah, that would be... Yeah, if he doesn't have the shot, then yeah, spend it on defence, but I guess we'll see. I mean, unfortunately, Solus one's not going to trigger this round. Um, but Impervium Plating, again, could be able to discard a face-up ship damage card. So for each of these attacks against Grievous, Grievous can only change one focus result because of Padme. Yeah. Yeah, that is so good. 
So Padme just goes, your your focus token there? No, it's just a calculate. Essentially. And a good shot. He's like, oh, it's Anakin, of course it is. And there's like two hits of the crit, so that is... Shields are gone. Two shields already. There we go. There's half of a good move. Obi-Wan doesn't have Iron Assembler, so should just go into Grievous. Again, I don't see why you wouldn't go into Grievous. He is the key piece in Madbot's list there. And the most expensive as well, at five points. Yeah, I was just looking up how many points he is. He's five. So even... I feel like if Wes doesn't eat, get half points here, then something's gone terribly wrong. Yeah. Okay, so no calibrated laser targeting from Kenobi. No, yeah. Bullseye. No bullseye, which makes me think there's no bullseye in return. Yeah. Well, Kenobi's the higher of the two um, deltas there, and then obviously the yellow one is. Oh, is that? That looks like a focus. Does he spend it or does he try and save it? But it's a crit that's gone through. I think he's contemplating it because he knows he's getting shot at more and he's about to have a shot. Yeah. But he and has. Do you look at it and you go, I'm probably going to go down no matter what. I'll save it for at least a decent shot back at someone. He's taken the crit and he has actually spent it okay. per plating there. So he does still actually have five hull. Okay. Um, when overlaying it, they were very quiet about what they were doing. I couldn't quite pick it up, unfortunately. Uh, but I can see that the charge has flipped and the card's gone back in, so that was a ship damage. All checking for that bullseye. He's really after that proton rocket. Yeah. Can't just... Don't, can't tell, but I'm, you know, don't blame him. It's a good shot. Yeah. Just put that template in front of it. It lines up perfect. That's all you need to do for the bullseye. Obviously, if it's on the angle, you need to check it, hold it over, but I think sometimes people forget that you can just... Like a Proton Rocket and Marksmanship as well. That yeah. can really do a number on something. And Wes's ships, are, I think they're good ships, but they don't have a lot of hull other than the Y-Wing. Yeah, it is tough. Uh, let's see how many dice he's rolling. It does look like we are going to get the Prockets off. Oh, okay. I guess the angles were slightly off, but in Madbot's favour, okay. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a dice cam for this one. Uh, I left the tray at home. Oh. So, it's 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 the it's one he's allowed to spend because of Padme, and then one becomes a crit. Which yeah, so it looks like... change there. So, two hits and a crit, I would guess. Yeah, two hits and a crit by the look of it. Oh, that's a decent amount of paint onto Luminara's dice. Yeah, that is Who's one is... shield. Yeah. You know what? After a proton rocket, I would I'd be more than happy to have only taken one shield there. Yeah, I yeah, for five dice only getting three, not the best. Oh, that's not good. But that's that's better. So it's a double crit, but he's taken one. And that crit is a panicked pilot. A wounded pilot, sorry. So having to roll after he does an action to see if he gets a stress. Not particularly. Do you know, I, I don't know, there's what? Padme? I, I, I am I haven't shot yet, has she? Uh, that was no, 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 the previous one, was, wasn't it? So, okay, so it's Padme yeah. and Matchstick to go. Grievous could still survive. He could still survive. And then maybe he'll just get in the way a bit. Yeah. Uh, so, that's another hit crit. That's one evade. Oh, this is getting sketchy now. And that is Padded Pilot there. Ah. So, Wounded Pilot's not really going to trouble him. No, for no, him probably not. Her. So, I've cleared all my stress. I'm going to do an action. Oh, I've got another stress. 
There's nothing worse than getting wounded pilot, like, doing it and then getting panic pilot after and having triple stress. Yeah, I guess that's the better way around for it, isn't it? Yeah. So I think that must be... Well, I think we're now hopping over to the... Bombers? Yeah, it should be the under on it should be the uh, HMPs now. So I mean there we go. Although matchstick should shoot before that, right? Yeah, I don't think I've seen matchstick shoot yet. I don't maybe he wasn't Unless in range. They assume he's out of range and they haven't measured it. I mean, I would have thought he was in range because I thought he got a target lock earlier, but well, either way, we're moving over to the separatists. So yes. So right. lots and lots and lots of multi metal problems. Yeah, they are fun. So how do these work? Because they're the one I don't have. So you spend one charge. If the defender is in your forward arc, you may spend an additional charge to roll one attack die. If the defender is in your bullseye arc, you may spend two charges to roll that many additional dice instead. So you could go two, three, or four red dice with this. I see they're a 180 arc missile. Yeah, so they work okay. automatically with the HMP. Obviously, you need to be able to have two missiles, so it's only ships that are likely to have that. And also, it's calculate or target lock, which again plays directly into the separatist um, like ethos. Which is probably why it's the HMP that's pictured on oh, the yeah. target. It's a cool looking ship. I do like that. I, there's so many cool like artworks where it, like it just looks so menacing. Like especially when you get that front on shot of it with like the like the sensors all glowing red. The, the thing I often forget that. about the surface ships is that they're not a ship piloted by a droid. They are the droid. Yes. And if you look at the HMP, it's like oh yeah, there's a face at the front of it. Yeah, and I mean, you can sort of see it with the vultures as well. Yeah, like the, that the bit. vultures are probably the most sort of recognisable as, oh yeah, that's the body, those are the legs, that's the head. I suppose because we've seen them in the movies actually like walking around. Yeah. And like the HMPs, I don't even know if they actually featured in any of the movies or if it was just the cartoons. And I feel like you've seen them in like, like maybe on Kashyyyk or something, or in like part of those sequences of like, here is the Clone Wars. That that sounds like the only time you'd really see them, because you, you definitely see the Tri-Fighter, the Vulture, the like Hyena. in the background when the Jedi are getting shot during Order 66 or something. Yeah, that's probably the most thing. In fact, if anyone does know, from the movie specifically, where if the HMP shows up and where, drop it in the comments, because it'd be interesting like, I feel like he did because I feel like there was a Lego set that came out with the film, probably, or at least prior yeah. to Clone Wars coming out. I mean, I have the advent calendar Lego version of it, which is tiny, about the same size as the actual X-wing version, to be honest. Oh, the Iron Assembler is heading off. Nope, he is rotating. He's just to head off? Pardon? To the head off later? Or just sort no, of facing the enemy? Probably just to face where all the enemy are. Like, I doubt the Iron Assembler is going to move at all. The Iron Assembler is more than happy just to sit there, especially with his ability. After a friendly ship at range 0 to 1 skips its execute maneuver step, you may spend one charge if you do. If there is an asteroid debris cloud at range 0 of it, that ship may repair one damage. Oh, okay, that's cool. So yeah, he's got he's got a fun ability, and he does have network calculations. Although the uh, AI holdouts don't, so it doesn't really make much of a difference. But what's really nice about the AI holdout, obviously, it's a triple pip unique, so you can only have three of them. But their ship ability, after you are destroyed, you may transfer each of your locks and green tokens to another friendly AI holdout at range zero to three. 
So that, it's a good that, call. I like that. I like that design space of like the three limited. Yeah. Because there's, there's a few that are like, especially with separatists, there's a few ships in there that have like multi limited. Yeah, like Padme um, had the two royal guards with her. The handmaidens, yeah. Her. Um, as well, you've got the Tri Fighter, the Fearsome Predator. You can have three of those. Um, I think there's a hate. I feel like that's kind of the limit because once you get to like a four of a kind, it's like, well, at that point, is there even point in putting a limit there? Yeah. Uh, a Geonosian prototype as well for the HMP is a two limited. Okay. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite nice when you have like, obviously, like your name pilots, you can only have one, but like some of your name generics that you can have multiple of but only to a certain amount is quite nice oh, Grievous deciding that he really wants to see if he can cause a hassle for a lot of ships I mean, he's not taking in actions there's no harm in taking a bump yeah and also that's a really nice spot for him to be in because it's very likely that he's going to bump that is in at the least way, yeah. one ship yeah I mean Oh. Is the stress already down on Anakin? No, I think that's on Luminara. I'll put this oh, okay. well, she's she's put it the there, knowing that that's roughly where she's going to end up. Got it. Yeah. I like that maneuver. Keeps her uh, facing the fight. Yeah, it keeps her very relevant. I, I actually quite like Sloops and Talons over K's. Yeah, yeah, gaining an angle or a bit of sideways movement can be very good. What I do find sometimes the K turns, other than like some of those ships have like a two and a one K turn, tend to move you too far away. Whereas a sloop doesn't, sloop or talent doesn't move you quite as far away, but still turns you round. Yes. Also, Luminara now has the bullseye. Yeah, Luminara has the bullseye, which is perfect for her. She's got the focus and the force if she needs it. So that's calibrated laser targeting. Range one and as well. Did get the bump on Padme, which makes me think he's possibly got one on Anakin as well. Unless he's gone super fast, yeah. I don't know, because where's so far has been finding those two next to each other? I mean... Don't, the attitude doesn't have a one forward. A two forward would zip past. A two forward would probably bump, unless it, maybe a three forward. I think Padme I'm, tried a two forward and bumped, so I think we're going to see something similar with Anakin. Hmm. And I think the two forward would. I can always guarantee the two forward would bump. Look at where the. Um, the question is, if there is a bump, can Madbots sort of capitalize on it? Because if you can shoot Anakin without any tokens, do it. I mean, he'll still take the focus. Because, I mean, he's got a good enough dial to get rid of it. Um, as well, I mean, he could always just do a three-speed manoeuvre after and look to get rid of that stress by spending Which the force. Uh, what what? Is the timing for the barrel roll? Is it before you maneuver or system phase? System phase. Right, we've gone past that. Okay. Yeah. So Ooh, there is the bump. Does bump. Okay. So I mean, he's got his bump there. He still has two ships that can really happily rail into Grievous. Is Matchstick actually close enough to the central? Objective at the moment. Because what is it? Range two for trans range, engagement? Range two. It's very, very, very yeah. tight if he if is. You might miss out on some objective points this turn. Yeah. Looks like we've got a Kalani trigger there, I believe it is. Can you remind me what Kalani does? Uh, I am just about to remind myself what Kalani does. I never use the tactical relays. Uh, Kalani, after an enemy ship executes a maneuver, if it is in the bullseye of a friendly ship at range 0 to 3, you may spend one charge. If you do, that friendly ship acquires a lock on that enemy ship, then gains one stress token. Okay, that's cool. 
So the iron assembler has just gained a lock onto Anakin there. And I like that, it, it's a cool card and the, char and the charges recharge. So it's not a non-recurring charge on there. I, I do like the way that a lot of the like commander crew cards work in the game. Yeah, there are some really good ones in this. Like the tactical relays are really, really clever. And there are some cool like crew cards that have those good abilities. Like Leia is always a fun one. I mean, she was ridiculous when she was like two points. Um, but like, if you've got yeah, like, that, was, that was silly. It's hilarious. I'm just going to take like a U wing with Leia and a load of B wings that are just going to literally like. I'm going to do a one talon roll with a B wing, and it's white. Awesome. Right. So, I think has everyone moved? Everyone has moved. Kalani has triggered. So, we, Anakin the, shooting. I believe that is what we have next. Anakin only has Grievous. So, so just a range zero. See what happens. Yeah. Pointing. A lot, a lot of pointing. Yeah. Oh, I think I think we missed the Anakin shot and it didn't do anything. Oh, okay. So then Obi Wan, Grievous, Obi Wan, oh, yeah, Obi -Wan that one. Okay, Grievous, range one into matchstick. Makes sense. It's the best shot he's yeah. got. Absolutely makes sense. Um, so he had a crit that was turned down by the whole plating, but can he then Mark turn it back? back on? Yeah. Yeah. So defender modifies, then attacker modifies. So they're just having a bit of a debate about the timing of it. Yeah, it's not often you get one. You don't get many triggers that work like that straight away. So there's not many triggers for a defender to modify attack dice, really. It's no. quite rare, I feel. It's more attackers modifying defense dice. Yeah. Uh, so that is two shields down on Matchstick. I, I feel like you need, you need to kind of get Matchstick in the fight a bit more and drop those seismic charges to really get a benefit yeah. from them at this point. I mean, I actually feel right now getting to a two forward this t next turn, hope that he lives long enough, then drop the seismic charge, because I can imagine a lot of those Vultures would be very close to that bottom objective. Or even if yeah. he sneaks in a three forward to be Oh by the the one that assembler's on. Yeah. Get, Maybe get, I feel like if you try and go that fast though, you're probably gonna bump into stuff and you won't actually get close enough. Yeah. I think if he tries to take out that rock that's next to him, that should be enough to catch something. What would be ideal is some kind of position where you put the seismic charge between both of those and then you can choose. Mm. That would be absolutely insane. Oh, uh, let's stress on Grievous. Yeah. And I think that was another ship one. So that's gone. So that's both Impervium Plating Charges done. Okay. Uh, Luminara, that's the calibrated laser targeting. Should have a target lock from earlier. There it is. Oh, and the focus four yeah. hits. This could do it. Um, I see at least a result. So two. Still, still there. One health. Still there. Oh, that's a bit disappointing. Therefore, whereas I'm, he's definitely hoping to take out Grievous. He's I feel like cookie. potentially Wes has gone too much into Grievous and is ignoring the rest of that boss list. Yeah. But it's it's kind of like, well, I've always started putting damage on him and he is still five points, so I'll, I'll finish. I mean, I get, obviously, Anakin and Luminara are definitely taking that shot there. Abbe could have tried to take a range three onto the Iron Assembler, but Matchstick definitely had some other options there. But I... I suppose it's one of those, there's five points, and it's what could be a potentially annoying gun off the table. 
but you look at it, those vultures have only got three hull. Like, you get a good shot, they're off the board. I know they're only two points apiece, but that again, that's still a gun that's not shooting yeah, you. Yeah, and also, like, when you consider with the plating as well, how much damage Grievous has taken, if that was on the holdouts, that's two of them? Yeah. Maybe nearly three? Absolutely, and I think as well, those energy shell charges, if they manage to go off, they are horrendous. Yeah. They are okay, pretty I, horrible. I guess maybe that's part of Madbot's setup. Like you put Grievous out on his own and go, oh, five points over here, come get him. And then he just does tank those hits whilst you get everyone else into a volleying position. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that Madbot's expected everything to be quite there with Grievous and then him to last as long as he did. I think he was always anticipating that things would have turned in quicker. So... Yeah, I mean, when you see the objective in the middle of the board, you kind of expect everyone to sort of go there, but Wes hasn't. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I know what you mean. With, with Charles' engagement, having that objective in the middle sort of, like, gravitates everyone towards it, and Wes is just ignoring that pull of gravity at the moment. And obviously, Mad Boss has got the Iron Assembler there just to grab that objective every turn, anyway. Uh, looks like we're getting a trigger of Luminara, I believe, there, in support of Obi Wan. Oh, yeah, now. Not sure if that did trigger, but um, Luminara is one. While a friendly ship ranger to two defends, if it is not in the attacker's bullseye, you may spend one charge. If you do, change one crit result to a hit result, or one hit result to a focus result. Which I'm not going to lie, combine that with Padme, that could actually be really brutal for your opponent. They think oh, yeah. I've, got, I've got one hit through. And I've got like a couple of focuses I can change to two hits. You're like, no, Luminara and Padme say you can't do that. But it looks like Padme might be just out of range there to trigger. So just, this is one of those really interesting ones. The range ruler is reaching on part of it, but that part of it is out of arc. So range three in arc right, is powerful okay. range. Yeah, that's, that's an odd situation. That doesn't come yeah. up much. You don't expect to see that very often. When you do, you're just like, oh, well, that's annoying. Or like you get it and it's like, oh, it's range one, but it's not in arc. In arc, it's just range two. So, still, so still more finger pointing after all that measuring. Yeah. One green die. Two. So it was into Obi Wan. Uh, so that was an elusive re roll. Um, okay. And Obi Wan took a shield. Okay, that's not awful for him. Not, not terrible. And now here's another shot into Obi Wan with the multi missile pods. Multi missile pods are just good fun. I mean, with a 180 arc, range 1 to 2, it's tricky to avoid them. Yeah. Very, very tricky to avoid them, um, especially for Separatists. Only needing a calculate, so it's calculate or target lock. So they're. Yeah, we're, we're squeezing them very heavy towards the HMPs. Yeah. Like, other people could take them but they're just not as efficient with them. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, I can see them going on other ships and just being quite fun anyway. Uh, again, like you'd just probably be used to it going, well, 
to shoot a munition, I need a target lock anyway, so I'll just accept that fact. Right, and if you're already needing a lock, you're going, well, maybe I'll just use a different type of munition anyway. I'm just having a quick look, so... You can't work out who else can take them. Well, there's some of the bombers, so like Tom Axe Bren can take it, which would be quite fun, because then you get a 180 arc with Tom Axe Bren for at least one shot. So, that's nice. Um, because I am a resistance player, Venice Doza can take them because she has a missile upgrade slot and then she can use the hard point for another one to take the... And isn't she the one that could shoot them at the back as yeah, well? Yeah, she can fly them backwards. So if she has a lock and flies past you, she can still shoot them backwards. Oh my god, that's just insane. But that's would you rather so do that or just take... Um, concussion missiles for one more point. Yeah, probably concussion. Or oh, sorry, I'm no barrage rockets. That's the other one for six oh. points. So two, two more points. I, I love barrage rockets. I think they're brilliant. Yeah, because they only again they only need a focus, similar to these multi missile pods only needing a calculate. Like it's just easier. Yeah. And when your loadout points are separate from your list points, spend them. And what I think I love about Barrage Rockets as well, I'll just bring them up to have a quick look again. Where are you there? Because they're two to three, like, say, Sync Laser Cannon, it means that if you've got the focus, you have a three dice shot at range zip, like range one through three on something like the bomber. Yeah, and a, a range three rocket is probably better than a range one to two because you deny the opponent the range bonus. Absolutely. Absolutely. But range one to two, 180 arc is annoying though. Like, yeah. Very right, annoying for the opponent. I it, it, wonder if we're going to see the Iron Assembler firing off these Discord missiles soon. Just to see I, who he catches. I wouldn't be surprised if we see it very soon. It's getting very up close and personal, and it looks like a good point to do it, but while we wait to see what the next round brings us, just to remind you guys, if you do like what we're doing here at Art of Art Gaming, you can support us on Patreon. The link is in the description below. Uh, we're regularly showing off some of the stuff that we've got coming up. Uh, we're starting to discuss with our players uh, in the local store what kind of things we're going to be having over the winter break um, for interesting game-wise. We've got Flight Academy Season 5 going on at the moment. We're looking at another Mario Kart, some Aces High that we're going to get recorded. So you'll be able to see some sneak peeks of those up on our Patreon if you are interested. All these, I mean, they're, they're called Vulture Joys for a reason. They are closing in. Yeah. I I do think the Vulture Droids are to less to, say, mid-experienced players. Uh, they don't seem very dangerous. Yeah, I would say, like, if you start off the game with, like, Imperials and you're like, oh, I really like these TIE Fighters, I wish they were a bit more involved, then trying the Vulture Droids, I think, is the next step for you kind of thing. Because they're, they're similar, but they have slightly different tricks to them. Yeah, I mean, I would say that... I mean, an Academy TIE and a... Vulture droid of say the Trade Federation drone, or I mean, I don't know where you take the Trade Federation drone when you can take the Carado holdout, they're going to be of similar annoyance to each other because you look at them and go, That's ah, three health. No, it's three health, no shields, be easy to take down. TIE fighters can be incredibly annoying to take down, and because they're cheap, you can get lots of them. Iron Assembler and the Colorado AI holdouts here are Initiative 1. Never laugh at Initiative 1 ship. 
they will surprise you they will sneak up on you they will get that final shot when you've spent all your tokens and it's gonna kill you so be careful of initiative ones because you forget about them at your own risk yeah and if they have tokens and it's still their turn they're gonna suspend them yeah and especially with these holdouts you take one holdout out he's passing all of his tokens over to his yeah head. that's true I guess it's sort of a case of if you take one of us out you better take us all out otherwise someone's gonna hurt yeah it's almost like they're a hydra in a way like they might not grow another head but those other two heads are gonna get stronger yeah I can see that and I always forget about that when I'm list writing, and I'm now thinking that I should look at those a bit more. Because Predator and Energy Shell Charges are oh, such a nice combo. I really like that. And again, range two to three, so it's giving it's giving these ships that three dice attack at all ranges. And you can reload the energy shell charges without having to have the reload action as well. It, 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 there's an action. The action on there is to reload that card. Oh, really, I didn't realise that. You very rarely see it get reloaded, to be honest, because by the time you shot it, you're normally that far into the action that you don't get a chance. But it can be reloaded. Three dice, range two to three. Um, you can spend one calculate token to change a focus to a crit. It's crazy. That is a lot of bumping in there. Yeah, this is a mess. <laughs> you always need, I always feel like you need those annotation marks just to be like, right, and here's this ship, and here's this ship, and here's this ship. I feel like this would just be a scribble. Yeah, it, it would look like my two-year-old doing a dot to dot. Has Matchstick moved? Matchstick yes. has moved and he bumped into okay. one of the holdouts. So potentially and, next turn Matchstick can blow up that rock next to him. Yeah, I don't know how worth it that... It could be worth it. I mean, you've got two charges. I feel like give it a go at this point because Madbots is at least flying in that general direction and it would force yeah. him to try and fly away. You've got your own Republic ships already away from it, and you've, I think, got enough space to, to the left of the screen to yeah. move your ships into to guarantee their safety. Yeah, and there's a bump from Luminara there. Oh, oh, there's a bump. Look at it. And she's also taken damage off that bump. Ooh, Half okay. points on Luminara. So she bumped directly into... Padme? She would have bumped. She would have bumped into Padme. Okay. And then she couldn't fit that bump, so she stepped back, and that's when she ended up into Grievous. But still counts as bumping. Yeah, into... it's whoever you originally bumped into. Yeah. Which I didn't know at one point, and I did it wrong, and one of my own ships died. Yeah. Also yeah. interesting oh. on that one as well. Um, that if it's a case of there's a, a sort of like a toss up between who you're bumping, like you bump into an opponent yeah, you, you and take a the worst option, you, you bumped into yeah. your friend. Yeah. Uh, oh, Grievous is getting away on one Grievous. health. That is, that's got to be frustrating for Wes. Like, I was paying oh. so much work into getting Grievous down on health to only get half points, which on a five is two points. Two points, it's rounded down for the first half. And he gave up position in the middle because Madbot's got two points last round for that. Yeah. Oh. It's it just not ideal. Oh, and he hasn't put any damage into anything else either. I, th I think... Wes needs to do something big this turn. He's got a lot of guns pointing at the... Was it the DGS bomber? Maybe he'll do something yeah. like that one. I mean... It's... It, it's Although Anakin hasn't moved yet, actually, looking at that. Yeah. Anakin hasn't moved, and 
it's frustrating that those HMPs are looking like the best option because there's so much health on there that it's not. Yeah, Madboss has done a good job positioning, being like offering up the healthier ships as the better targets to shoot at. Because then you go, well, I mean, I, I could take the range three onto the holdout over there, or or I can take the range one on the bomber right in front of me. But then all of the, the little guys stick around and just take little pot shots and they do eventually get through. Yeah. I mean, especially you look at yellow in the middle there. I know it's got a focus second, it's actually a calculate. Um, but he's got a nice shot there. He could energy shell into Luminara, he could energy shell into Padme. He could edit your shell into matchstick. Oh, like, I reckon in, in he goes for Luminara, because Luminara's only on two hull. Well, I reckon that the HMPs will multi-missile, well, red will multi-missile, because yeah. I don't know if, um, oh, is this, oh, this is a Kalani trigger. Look at all those, look at all those. Oh, okay. Who are these okay. going on? So there's two lock there's three locks on Luminara, which have come from both the HMPs and I and I anticipate I an assembler at the back there because it has to be in bullseye. Okay, three. Which is and, the, and the and the fun thing here is the oh, is HMPs. Is a bump. Oh, another bump for Anakin. Well, I was going to say, the funny thing here with the all those locks on Luminara is the HMP's shift ability. So you cannot spend your locks to reroll attack dice. While you perform an attack, you may reroll a number of attack dice up to the number of friendly locks on the defender. Oh. So that's... So that I is... I play against these bombers more, because they're really interesting. With really... I knew they had, like, the side slip thing. I didn't realize they had that yeah. as well. That's really cool. Yeah, so the repulsor lift is really cool. So whilst it's inactive, which is the side you set up, you reduce the difficulty of their straight maneuvers. So they have a blue one to three and white four and five. And then after you exit move it, you flip that card and it gives you the side slip off the bank or the hard turn. Um, and you must perform that maneuver as a side slip. So you're kind of telegraphing that it's likely you're going to do that. You're telegraphing uh, it, but also at that point, what, what is your opponent going to do about it? You're going a completely different direction to what you should. Absolutely. Um, which is really cool. Then you've got the network game, which is just really fun. Um, like the under on oppressor after you side slip if you are after you barrel or side slip if you're stressed gain one calculate token love that dgs before you engage you may choose another friendly ship or range zero to one that ship transfers one calculate token to you so, so they can both just get calculates anyway yeah that's very cool. powerful and then those calculates go well now we can fire the multi missiles yeah now we can fire multi missiles we can fire energy shell charges we could just laugh in your face. Yeah. And then Padme goes, no, you can only modify one thing anyway. Yeah. Darn Padme ruining everyone's party. But don't diss Padme, she's got the best wardrobe in the entire franchise. <laughs> or certainly the biggest. Yeah, I'd say it's between her and Lando, right? Oh, that's true, actually. Then again, Lando's is mostly capes. If you had that many capes, you'd be happy. Yeah, that's true. Right, so let's have a look where attacks are going to go. Where's this pointing at red he's, there? He's pointing at red. There's a lot of pointing at red. I uh, yeah. assume it's so. Like I mean, he's got a lot of guns pointing there. Yeah. And what, Anakin? Yeah, Anakin, he has the range one. Ooh. Uh, so, forcing these okay. and... Two damage. So two damage. Good start. Good. I mean, Wes has enough guns to potentially kill 
DGS before it shoots. Going to be close. It I will mean... be close, but he has the higher initiative on all of his ships. Yeah, so if Padme range one, that's three dice. And if you can deny multi-missile pods and get Kalani off the board, because that's proving yeah. it, then great. The focus, that's two. One more. Now, Luminara, I don't think has bullseye on. No, not on red at least. Might have it on the. Who's yellow? What are the. It's the pink holdout. I, oh, the pink holdout one. Okay. I, but I think you, you still go for red. Yeah. But there's a lot of there's a lot of ships, there's a lot of stickers, don't worry about it. I mean, a couple a couple more damage onto him, and then he's more actually half as well. Off. That's not a good roll at all. And. Not much you can do on that one, I don't think. Just spending the force for one. Give it a go, I suppose. And it worked. Go through, so that's half points. Was that... Was that on red? Uh, it was one defense die rolled. Unless maybe that was a shrine to blue? I'd be surprised if it wasn't a blue. I'm, sure that one. I'm sure that the guys have kept track of it. Yeah. The uh, who's next? Stick. Padme? No, we had Padme. Padme Matchstick. Got matchstick, yeah. Range two. It's a shame he bumped. He could have put that dorsal turret to take out Grievous, but uh, just the one got a reroll there for the red token. There is two very right, well, definitely half points yeah, now on D. I don't think got the damage he wanted out of that because now he's got a lot of guns coming back at him. I think Luminar is not going to live this round. It's a question of who do you then shoot at? Yeah. Or just whoever your best shot is, which it looks like is had made maybe Anakin. I would say go. Luminara with blue. Yeah, definitely. Um, you want know, to take those range zero shots. You've, you've got the range. You've got the range one shot there with three re rolls. You got well, I'm uh, three, three re rolls, but you can only change one focus. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. this apparently doesn't stop you re rolling. So there's there's that. Uh, she stops you re rolling focuses because re rolling oh, is the modifying. Oh, I thought of it that way around. Yeah. Okay. So you I can re roll the sort of flag. Spending... Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. It, okay. It, it's easy to forget that re rolling is technically modifying your dice. So. But yeah, there's blue. So. Oh, maybe that is. Maybe that is multi missile. Maybe it was outside of. Oh, multi missile's range one to two. What, what about silly? Yep. Uh, three uh, defense dice, which could still be any one of Wes's ships, to be honest. But uh, I, that that is because it's multi missile. It has well, to be. Literally, literally, can't be range zero. Range zero, range zero. Range zero. Yeah, yeah. And you'd be you'd be foolish not to shoot a Luminara. Two hell, like get her down. That's a that's huge. Uh, yeah. So using dedicated to re-roll there with the strain. Nice. Uh, always, only, always good when you remember abilities like that. Yeah, so only taking the crit, which is a hole breach, which obviously, when you have one hull, is when you get a hole breach. Um, how does dedicated work again? You take a strain. So, dedicated, uh, I will bring that up just now. So, one another friendly ship in your side arc at range zero to do defense, if it is limited or has the dedicated upgrade and you are not strained, you may gain one strain token. If you do, the defender rerolls one of their blank results. So that saved Luminara? It did save Luminara That's there. That's actually... I mean, Mad Bots has to use another shot to finish the job, which means less damage going elsewhere. Yeah, and it looks like we're... That, I think, is red. Must be red, because it's the I3 step. 
Tell you what, though, with all of these ships shooting, we're only on turn four. Yeah. There's so many. I mean, I appreciate that the guys have got into combat almost straight away, and there's been a lot of shooting in this game. But also, you look at it, it's like, they've barely moved. Absolutely. I mean, that's one of the things with, especially separatist lists. Um, yeah, high ship count separatist lists. Lists. Yeah, high ship count lists. Um, yeah, fair play for them to actually getting like as many shots in as they can. I mean, very few ships have not shot that often. I mean, this is the first round that Grievous isn't shooting. Um, I think Obi Wan is probably one of the only ones that hasn't really shot that often. Oh, but there's Obi Wan has taken a shot. I think everyone yeah. has done something in terms of shooting. True. So that is Luminara down. So yes. that is some good points. But I think the main thing is Madbot's positioning there to capture that objective, essentially. Yeah, I, um, I feel like, you know, even if Wes does get some kills and gets points that way, I think the objective points that Madbot is going to get is going to give him the win. Yeah. Especially now that he can just have Grievous go around the board and just make sure he's just at range two of that and then he doesn't even have to worry about his other ships being near it true absolutely true and we said when Grievous has got all that stress on him we're like, well he's he's done he might clear it and fix his other crit and then be fine which is actually quite funny really to think that We've basically written him off in I mean, turn. He's, he's limping away. He's this is how he got his cough, I think. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is this is what Grievous does. He gets into a fight that he can't handle and then runs away. Yeah. So this is classic. It's really thematic, yeah. I mean, yeah. Luminara does die in Order sixty six. Yeah, I think. Or no, she slightly after. No, she would be. Oh, it's sometimes hard to keep track of, especially when things get real. I'm pretty sure Luminara is in Order 66. Is Luminara the one they find in Rebels? Was that Shark T? So, Wikipedia. But, yeah, and I, I do like the Wes has. And if you know you want to pair me, that's just thematic. I always enjoy thematic stuff. And Padme is taking a lot of damage, but she survives the round. Looks like we're going to go into one last round, but Wes needs to do a lot of work to catch up. I mean, how many points are these? Little guys, they're they're not many, are they? Two they, points they're... apiece. Yeah, so at this point, you kind of either circle around and try and ping one damage onto Grievous. Yeah. Finish off the DJS, and you, I don't think you can let Madbots get sole control of the objective this turn. Otherwise, you've got basically no chance. I actually think mm. drop the seismic charge. Yeah, there. I was going to say, I hope the seismic does something. If the seismic yeah. catches Grievous, then Madbots has made a critical error. Yeah, but even if that seismic charge only catches the AI holdouts, because I, it looks like you're going to have at least one there, softens them up, Obi-Wan's going to come back round. Oh, going straight to dials. So, no bomb? I... I... I think that was a mistake. Do you reckon it was a case that they just forgot about the system phase? Which I do all the time. No, I don't... maybe? Or you think it's just a mistake of just not choosing to do it? Yeah. It is, it is going to be a mistake on either choosing not to do it or having forgotten about it, but I think... I, I'm really confident that that would have been a great... seismic charges would have been a good idea. So this one. I, mean, I guess we'll see where everyone ends up. Obviously, if the seismic charge was there, then positioning might be any a little different. Yeah. But we'll I, yeah we'll see. Also, we haven't seen the uh, proximity mines. 
Uh, so yeah. I, don't, I don't think that they that's really been in a position with anything behind it. No, I mean he's always had one of his own ships behind, so probably wouldn't want yeah, to use that. Not ideal. Yeah. So right now, I think seeing where that vulture is. Yeah, you were clipped that one for any damage. Oh, absolutely. Where I, I think that's think... for one damage, or is it different now? I can't remember. Uh, Seismic charge does one damage. It is just one. Okay. It is just the one. Yeah. So there's one straight damage, which is really fun. Uh, looks like the HMPs are just bumping. Yeah, this, this is going to be another pretty messy round. Especially now that everyone's stressed and they're all trying to do blue manoeuvres and it's like, well, now I, I'm even more limited, I'm definitely going to bump. I think overall, Madbots has had better positioning this game. Yeah. I mean, the initial opening, I think, was really nice from Wes. Um, yeah. It just, unfortunately, Madbots was able to use Grievous really well to block that Yeah, I feel second... like that's what Grievous does best, is take some hits, gets in the way, and then survives, which is exactly what happened here. Yeah, and that has been, that has been absolutely ideal because it's just it really disrupted Wes's plans completely. Padme and Anakin were blocked. It gave yeah, I mean, they, they really hit the really, I love that stuff. Padme has used her ability, but hasn't been able to get those free evades because it's or, just been a traffic jam. Or the advanced proton torpedoes. Anakin, actually, boys. Siege of Coruscant Anakin's ability. What's so the, are you looking at the ancillary ion weapons? So you can choose to use his guns as ion instead. So uh, typically it doesn't actually show it directly on yeah, there. Yeah, what, what is Anakin's ability though? Uh, one moment. Or is it Go. just the same as the other Anakin no, in that it, theater it, too? It is slightly different. I'm just going to have to pull yeah. it up. Oh, no, it does bring up that ability. Okay, so after you or a friendly Obi Wan ship at range 0 to 3, fully executes a maneuver. There are more enemy ships other than the friendly ship, other than other friendly ships range 0 to 1 of that ship. You may spend one force. If you do, that ship may perform a barrel roll. Yeah. Right, okay, so him and Obi Wan can do some barrel rolls. Yeah. They can do spinning. That's a good trick. So the ancillary ion weapons, when you perform a primary forward arc attack before rolling attack die, you may spend two charges. If you do, your crit results deal ion tokens instead of damage. I mean, Which... I think droids could be good, because you can't calculate after an ion. Okay. Yeah. That's more effective in the actual Siege of Coruscant mission. Oh, okay. It's really good. It, it It's not a bad shout here. But it works better in there. When you go, well, I'll just take the damage. Yeah, but I mean, you're getting a four point I six with three force and R two D two, so he can repair. Yeah, I assume the R two D two is the same repairing as other R twos, getting shields. Actually, no, it wouldn't be shields in this case. It would just be hull. It would just be hull. So yeah, after you activate, you may spend one charge to get one deplete token to repair one damage card, recover one shield, or remove one device at range 0 to 1, so bye bye oh, buzz droids. Oh, cool, I like that. Oh, which we did miss earlier, buzz droids were shot. Oh, were they? I totally did not see that at all. Where, who, who that? Oh, oh. So that was actually the previous round. They landed on Anakin, but then Padme shot, Padme or Luminara shot them off, so it didn't actually do any damage. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we were I think we were discussing yeah, there's, there's that. There's so many tokens down there at the moment, it is a little tricky to see. I mean, Wes has just put the focus on top of Matchstick there, who yep. surprisingly hasn't bugged, but also, I will point out, Grievous is out of range, so it would not have been clipped by the seismic, it would have only been... I think uh, I uh, just playing it safe, keeping those points yeah, away yeah. from Wes. Yeah. 
And again, he still has that Iron Assembler there since the start of the game, just guaranteeing that he's got the objective. In the fact, he might be the only ship in range at this point. Yellow might just be a range, but not that it matters. I don't think Matchstick is it. Well, actually... If yellow's in range, matchstick is. Matchstick, matchstick will be a range. Well, I don't think either of them are. It's very, very close. So if Madbots gets those two points from the middle, Wes needs to do a lot of damage, and I don't think he's going to be able to do it. I don't think Wes is going to be able to. I mean. At least not without also losing Padme, which is, what, two points? The, the yeah. rest of the panel? Yeah, she's four over four. Yeah. I mean, should Obi-Wan somehow take out the Iron Assembler with a range three shot? I'd highly doubt. Uh, Anakin could take out one of those one of those AI holdouts. Um, the annoying thing is where Padme and Matchstick's shots are. I mean, they could take out the holdout and Iron Assembler, ignoring the HMP. Anakin could potentially try and take out that red HMP. There's a lot of points up for grabs, but it's a yeah, very just, slim margin of Go, You know what? I'll take out the HMP because that's also on three health, and then I'll just try and get as many of these little guys as I can. Alright, so this is presumably Anakin. So, Anakin, so... Range one sets three dice. I, I would assume this is into red. Oh no, two. So that's into the blue holdout? Yes. Okay. So, so two on. damage. Okay. Oh, oh. Close. Then Obi-Wan doing a similar shot, or he might be going for red? Because I think he's possibly he's, got he's bullseye got, on both. He's got bullseye, so you've yeah, got... Yeah, there's focus for bullseye. I guess we'll see how many defense dice get rolled. That's three. So, presumably the blue the holdout. Blue droid, yeah. So, he lives. okay. I think with him living, I think that's probably that, it. Yeah. But we'll, we'll see how it ends up. Padme and Matchstick still get to shoot. Nothing from Nothing. Padme and Matchstick. Oh, yeah. Does he take out yeah. just to be salty, or does he try and see if he can get three hits into DGS? Um, DGS, just because. Yeah, give it a go. It's more points. Three v one, yeah, three v yeah. one. Go for it, yeah. guys. Oh, oh, this could do it. Is that a bang? That does it. Nice, and that helps protect Padme somewhat. So that's DGS down there, so that is quite good. Let's put initiative killed as well. 10 8, that actually does bring the points up a but lot more favorably there. No one else to shoot. Yeah, so now it's just how many points can Madbots finish up on? Can he? He's got two shots into Padme. Can he finish you go, Padme? You, go, you go for Padme. She's on one. Oh, yeah. I mean. Blue's got to go for matchsticks, that's all it's got. So, I maybe see like if you can the 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 just went, I'm never going to land a hit on these Jedi, or at least Anakin and everyone. I'm just going to ignore them. Basically. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to bump them, I'm going to force them to go around, and I'm just going to take out the other ships and get the objectives. Yeah, I mean, you look at Obi-Wan, he's got brilliant evasion, elusive, and three force. Really difficult to land that. What does his Q7 Ashman do? I think he only took then, oh, while well, you barrel roll or boost, you can move through and overlap obstacles. Okay. Oh, really I love cool. that. It's only one point, though, so yeah, why not? Yeah. It's one of those ones I always even forget exists. Yeah, you still go, oh, I've got a point and an Ashmeric start walking. Oh, yeah, sure, we'll throw him on. Third. Is Asimba taking a shot at Matchstick, was that? Maybe. No. Nope. Oh, no, no, it's Padme. Okay. I was going to say, that's 
that is the hundred percent right choice. I think they're just checking the arc. I think he's got it. Yeah. So it it's looks to be like when you, you look at it from distance, you go, I don't know if that's an arc, and then you measure it, oh no, it's definitely an arc. I don't know what my eyes were thinking. Yeah. And that's Padme. Well, now, Padme. now oh. Wiz gets to take the Anakin and swap it out for a Vader, right? That's how that works, yeah. isn't it? Hundred um, percent. Also, this is angry, so it's a defender. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. Go for go for full rage, Anakin. I've seen some really nice, um, nicely painted Eta twos in, like the. Like almost Vader esque colours. So it's oh, like, like that. An, an Imperial Eta two. That's it, yeah. An Imperial Eta two. They, they, oh, they look really nice as well. Oh, and a fuel legal matchstick. Oh. And. But there's no more no, shooting. Not quite half points on matchstick as well for our boss, but he's, he's done well. 13 to 8 in the end there. Um, yeah, that was an yeah. absolutely... It, it was an interesting game because it yeah, looked the, very uh, different at the start. The holdouts held out. Yep, and Grievous, I mean, seriously, how did he yeah, survive? Grievous surviving was... I, I can feel Wes's frustration, but also yeah. Madbots did the right thing with him, just, you know, it was a distraction and then kept him safe. That's that's what you do in those situations. So really well done from both players. And Madboss has learned a lot in using that list as well from last time to this time. So well done to adapting so quickly to what is essentially I think his third or fourth time flying Separatists. Okay. So like he's 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 done a really good job there. But there's a lot of interactions there to remember and it looked like he didn't miss any. Yeah, he did very well. But James, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed that one. You're welcome. That was a, that was a good game to watch. Well, guys, again, thank you all for sticking around and watching this game. As we said earlier, Flight Academy Season 5 is on the horizon. We are in the process of getting those videos edited and ready for you. It is the start of the medium base ships. So look out for that coming up soon. Make sure you don't miss it by subscribing to the channel, liking this video, and we will see you next time.